Greetings all, this is Mike, Whiskey Alpha 9, Papa India Echo, or VK4EIE, and I wanted to go into a topic that people ask about occasionally and explain a little bit more about how it works. So I'm going to talk about DX cluster location data, and um, because we've introduced some new work status indicators and we'll leverage those in subsequent releases, I wanted to do a little bit of a demonstration. Now while I'm setting this up, click on the subscribe button if you want to be updated when we have new videos posted to our YouTube channel. And uh, that will help you keep up to date with what we're doing here at Ham Radio Deluxe. So what we're going to talk about is where does the data come from? And there's two important points to understand about the location data that you see in Ham Radio Deluxe Logbook's DX cluster. The first thing to understand is that the DX cluster pane doesn't do call sign lookups for all the calls that are spotted. If you can think about it, there's probably tens of thousands of spots that come through every day, and it wouldn't really be effective to do call sign lookups on all those calls, and um, folks like QRZ.com might get upset with us if we decided to do that many lookups in a day. So you can do the lookups uh, once you put them in the ALE to get the most exact data. But uh, basically the approach is a parse and display kind of approach. So the data that you see in the DX cluster is only as good as the data that's stored within the DX cluster or node that you connect to. So with that in mind, let's go dig for some data. So here you can see I've got logbook open. I've got the DX cluster running. And you can see that so I look through some of these work status indicators that I've added. Some of them have values and some of them are blank. And you can see as new ones come in, it'll analyze whether or not they're, you know, matching certain categories and so on. And before I go further, I'll show you the location where you add those work status indicators into your view here. It's under layout and you can select things that you want to put in your layout. So your layout is this on the right. You can change the order. You can move them up or down. You can decide what goes in your view, what doesn't. Um, and you, you do that by selecting these over here. Now when you select them, um, you'll see the notes down here that show you what that is intended to do, where the data came from in some cases. But um, what I've got set up for mine is that you'll see these new work status indicators for grid, state, CQ zone, ITU zone, continent, county, and prefix. And we'll talk about this a little bit more as I go. So you'll see some of them are blank. First of all, county is blank because there's no county data provided by the DX cluster. I put it there just to demonstrate that when there's no data, it's not going to show anything there. And then if you have, um, for example, this one here, it's Italian uh, station. And of course, there's no state, you know, referenced in an Italian station. Whereas if you look at this next one, there absolutely is a state um, shown where this individual is in Nevada. And so I want to show you how this data, uh, where this data comes from, because some of these, as I scroll down here, you'll see here's a, a grid that came up that I haven't worked yet and um, so uh, some of them will show yield signs that I have worked them but not confirmed them so why are some of them blank so let's go into that a little bit over here where the show uh, button is if you drop it down and click on console this is the raw data that comes from the DX cluster that you connect to and if I click this button here I can view all that data in a text file. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want some of that data for this demonstration. So I'm going to go along and grab a big chunk of data, uh, probably scroll up where there's a whole bunch of entries that come down at one time. Okay, now that I've got this data, I'm going to copy some of it. And um, I'm just going to take the first hundred that came in when I logged onto the cluster. I'm going to highlight it, copy it, and I'm going to paste it into Excel. Now you don't need to do this, but um, I just wanted to do it to demonstrate 
um, how the data, what the data looks like once it comes into logbook and how it gets parsed. And I'm going to put a header field up here, a header row if you will. And then I'm going to adjust the size of the columns a little bit to make it easier to read. Okay, so now we can see the, um, the data that comes from the cluster and it's parsed and ready to display. And you can see the first row just shows you what kind of a line it is, what row or what, what kind of um, protocol it's using. Frequency, the call, the date and time in, in Zulu. Spotter comments are in here. We can see who spotted the call. And um, these fields about DX and spotter country are numeric values that don't match up to the ADIF numeric values for DXCC country, so we ignore them. Um, the spotter node is in there. Here we can see the DX um, zones, um, the ITU zones and the CQ zone for the countries and these are all populated. And uh, of course the spotter zones are here. We can see the state for the DX station if there is one and a spotter state. Um, then you've got country for the DX station spotter uh, country and then you've got the grids for the DX country and the spotter. Now, some of this data is blank. These are blank. Why are they blank? Well, uh, they're blank because there's no data in the cluster network for those particular stations. So let me show you what I mean. I'll pick one uh, here. This is um, J5HTK or HKT. And I'm going to go in, back into my cluster node here. And I'm going to say show station J5HKT. And the cluster network you can see down here says no record for J5HKT found. That's why this is blank. But let's come down and look at a different one. Let's look at, um, let's look at this one. 3D2AG, all the information's filled in on it. This is good, so let's go look at 3D2AG. Show station 3D2AG. And it comes back and tells us that there's station data there. So that's where the station data comes from. In the cluster network, if the station information exists, it shows that data when, when the uh, spot comes through. So if I click on, if I say uh, show um, station, and I'm, now I'm abbreviating it, WA9PIE, so this is me, and um, I can see my data. How does that data get there? Well, if you fill out your my station data, you're going to see that here, and when you connect to the cluster node, Logbook will automatically send that data as part of the login process. So this is where all that stuff happens in the login process. So if you're using Ham Radio Deluxe, all this information gets set up. If you're not, there, um, there are ways that, for example, J5HKT could have gone to a cluster node and entered all this data and it would have been available to us. But since that didn't happen, some of these are vacant. And you can see there's no county in any of this data. And that will come along later on with um, a new feature we're working on where, where we will get the county. Um, so that's how, that's how that works out. So if we move back over into logbook, we can change that back to spots and then we can see these spots. But if I went to check some of these, I would find that um, the same thing is true. Now there's a question mark here. That basically says this particular station was operating in an area that, of the band that we really couldn't determine what its mode was. Uh, which, by the way, you don't see mode here either. So mode in software is usually determined by the frequency that it's operating on, which means that during contests and certain kinds of activity, de-expeditions and so on, stations will work outside of their... Um, you know, of the bands for subbands for CW and digital and so on. So that's why it's a hard thing to do um, in software because it's not provided in the uh, 
in the DX cluster data. So that's what we've got, and I wanted to make sure that I explained that a little bit. If you found that helpful, give us a thumbs up there, hit the like button. I've had plenty of comments on the microphone, and so I'm using an Audio-Technica um, studio microphone here, so that's what I'd normally use, and at times I'm probably not as close to it as I should be, but that's what I'm using here. Thanks for watching the video. If you uh, are so inclined, you can save 20% off on uh, new Ham Radio Deluxe purchases or renewals by using coupon code YouTube. Thanks everyone, 73 from WA9PIE.